Hello, hello again. Sorry, it's been a few days. I've been a little under the weather. But I'm back at it again with another INI video. And also, I'm going to use an example of automating emails uh, as my example for how to collect the data I want. So let's go ahead and go up here. So I kind of broke the code up into different sections so that um, you can see it piece by piece on what it's supposed to be doing. Obviously, you can reorganize this however you want. So the first thing I want to do is I want to send an email. Uh, unfortunately, I don't actually have a email application on my personal computer, so I'm not able to show you that, but hopefully you can understand this. So I know at work we use Outlook. So what I want to do, I want to automatically send this email. Obviously, you can put up here something like... Uh, you know, if, when, exist, or when, activate. I covered that in another video. But I'm just assuming that I'm already in Outlook and I'm ready to send that email. So the first command I got here is send control N in Outlook. That opens up a new email for you. Uh, it might be different for other programs, not really sure. So you might just have to play with that a little bit. Next, I'm going to send input. And hopefully... Uh, your cursor automatically when you open a new email will be in the subject line or the to field, sorry. So test at there.com. It's then going to tab down three spaces to the subject line. Enter that, tab down two more to the body, and put that in there. You can use uh, comms in Outlook. I'm going to cover comms pretty much in general in a later video. But I'm just sending like a very basic email, so I don't really need to get too fancy or complicated with it. Depending on your browser or your email service, you might have to change how many times something's tabbing. So once again, just play with that. So the person's going to send this email. I want to know how often they're using this, just for my own personal reasons. So I had a counter here. And all you do is name a variable, and you add plus plus at the end. This is going to... Every time they launch, it's going to start counting how many times they've pushed F1. Well, then I want to know who's doing it and how often. So I'm going to use an INI right here. And there's that counter right there. There's also a built-in uh, variable in the HK, a username. That's just going to grab the username. That way, if I want to know who exactly is using it. And then obviously, it's just going to write to my desktop path. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people have the ability to share hard drives at work, like a share drive. I usually try to save these to those, just so that I have access to it. Because obviously, if it's just saving to their desktop, they're going to have to open up an email and send you the data. So having a way to share it uh, like that is definitely the way to go if you can. It's going to create less work for them having to send you a ton of emails. And making sure you don't miss anybody. And then I'm just going to do the title or section, and what the variable is going to be saved as. So I'm going to go ahead and run the first one, and then we'll go ahead and write that. So I'll just do it in here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to push F1. I should probably run the program. F1. And as you see, it went ahead and actually opened up a new uh, thing here. And there's all my information. Now I want to store that information. So right now I just have it as a hotkey. You guys can set up a timer with just set timer. Maybe make it go off every 24 hours to save their data automatically for them. That's definitely the better way to go. So I'm going to go ahead and write all that information. I want to know how many times I used it. I want to know the username. Let me go ahead and actually push F1 a few more times just to get a bigger number there. Oops. All right, I'm going to go ahead and push F2. And if the INM file does not exist yet, it is going to go ahead and create it. So it just made this for me. And this is all an INI file looks like. There's that title there, the section, and then here's the variable. So as you see, I used it three times, and my username is Dom. Now I want to call upon that data. You can do two things. You can just read the file like I just did. Or if you want to get fancy, maybe just have like a message box. So that's what this I and I read. It's going to read back the exact same stuff that was up here. And then just sign it to these variables in a message box. And there we go.
Tom equals three. So I used this F1 function up here three times. Now at the beginning of your script, if you want a way for it to the count to reset, all you gotta do is use this variable with just an equal sign, leaving it blank, or you can just do zero. Now we're gonna go down here to an array count. Arrays can be very helpful in if you're collecting a ton of data, you need a place for it to know how to store it. So you can make it so it can actually read. You know, let's say I had 50 people who use this function. You know, that's a lot of data to look at. That would be 50 lines of code. You can just do an array so that every time this runs, it's just going to go up by one. So last user set, one, two, three, four. And that's only just a few lines of code versus like 50. Obviously, you're going to want to create a loop here. Actually, you want to create the loop above the count so it's in there. And I'll go through and read all the data. And then you can just add maybe an if down here so that the loop can break. We could do something like if, you know, like this variable uh, equals nothing. It's blank, that means it's hit the end of the list. Then go ahead and just break. All right, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll be posting this uh, code down in the description like I always do. And hopefully you guys will be around for the next INI file, because it's time to get a little bit more complicated now that we know the pretty much the basics to INI read and write and why they can be useful. See ya! And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, please. It helps me out, definitely. And I will hopefully uh, see you guys on the flip.